no shortage of stress. Morning! Or should I say afternoon? Hey, buddy. What's on the docket today? I gotta finish the Gretsch snare. Uh, rope drums mostly. The uh, rope tension snares for Piscato Rangers. Hopefully get those all uh, hardware layout and bearing edges, snare beds, and then uh, put a finish on the inside so that they're more resilient to the weather. Since I'm doing those, I figured I'd throw this one in the back. We have a mahogany drum line over in the display area that's a 14 by 14 snare, a 16 16 snare, and a, I think a 16 by 24 base. So this is a 16 by 16 that's gonna to go to finish up that drum line, which will then be available either for rent or for sale. I gotta tuck a set of capskin hoops for somebody. Hopefully, hopefully I can get around to, to starting a couple other things. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I think my camera batteries have become junk, but I have two so I can swap back and forth. If they get to the point where it takes longer to charge one than the current one dies, then don't worry about it. Well, for the most part, this wrap stayed down, but I got a tiny bit of a flapper. Oh yeah. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna call in the super glue troops. <laughs> Maybe try that. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I hate it when people don't put the seam under. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly under the lug, but like to me, that's a little too far away. You want the lug there holding shit down, you know? Bad move, dude. Bad move. Well, the barge failed me, which usually doesn't happen. So I resorted to super glue, which of course some has and will squeeze out onto the wrap. And I'll need to remove it. So on today's episode of Things I Don't Know But Will Soon Know, will acetone melt the wrap? This isn't the exact wrap, but it's close. The acetone doesn't melt it, but it definitely takes the shine. Let's try mineral spirits. What's it gonna do? Mineral spirits didn't melt it, and it doesn't look like it took away the shine either. Of course, I don't know if mineral spirits does jack with super glue. As far as my finger goes, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> this drum is difficult for me. Uh, it came in covered in oil and in pieces with some broken stuff, and the order was just to clean it up. But I want to go above and beyond and make it perfect, which from a business sense yeah. is bad because that's just diminished returns. It's just the balance because based on restoration, I was fine letting the imperfections stay. Yeah, because we're it was supposed to. It was supposed to, and it was kind of cohesive. But then this comes in with mismatched rims, mismatched lugs, yeah. and I need to be good with just setting it back out the way it was, but clean. It took me a long time to get to where, like, just do what they asked for. Do the job they asked you to do, not the job that I would do. It took me a while to, like, get cool with that. And things like whether or not you recut the bearing edges, I've become a huge proponent of, like, don't change it unless there's a problem. Because now that I've seen so many vintage drums come through here with garbage bearing edges that sound amazing, I, I always want to hear what the drum sounds like before I put the edges. But honestly, I mean, these, like, this is fine. I lightly sanded and wax them. But that's what you do, is just like, just make sure that they're cleaned up. I'm not gonna like flatten and recut them no, no. until I hear what the drum sounds like. What, what kind of heads do you want to put on? Let's use, uh, snare side 300 for the bottom. Hey, look at that. Let's use that. Let's see, should we be dry and crispy or fat and beefy? I mean, I'm personally these days leaning towards fat and beefy. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, let's make it fat and beefy. All right, so we'll go with the power center reverse dot and uh, snare side 300. This is what you can find in the Calderwood sink. That's some Ed Gein level stuff right there. Generally, it brings me much joy to launch these boxes in the air. <laughs> but there's way too many drums behind me for that. Yeah, you can, you can send it the other way. Send it! It's fun. Box it's fun to have by all. 
So these snare beds were deeper than I usually see. So the bottom head is wrinkly at those points and I can keep cranking and cranking and cranking, but they're not gonna come out. With drums that are, are old enough that when they were made, you know, casting heads was the only option. It's normal to see snare beds that are like crazy deep because with calfskin, like it'll just shrink to whatever shape you put it on when it dries. So you don't want to, you know, cut new bearing edges and, and cut new uh, snare beds that are, are shallower and you want to use plastic heads, then a heat gun is the move. Keep the gun moving and just do light passes. You can shrink the mylar just in the area of the snare bed and then the, the head will conform to the shape of the drum. So it acts like the heat shrink on the windows in the winter time. Yeah, it's, exactly. I didn't think this drum was old enough that it would be from a time period when the expectation was that calfskin heads would be on, but I, I don't know. Honestly, I, I haven't worked on that many Gretsch drums to, to know like what their trends are with, with snare beds, but these are really deep. So even with this, like even with this head pretty tight, like it was nowhere close to getting down into the snare beds, which would make it harder to, to get the snares, you know, tuned to have good response. So just shrinking the head just a little bit right in the snare beds helps you know get that contour right. Bill and I both dislike snare cord like this so we use ribbon cheap at Michael's craft store. Just burn the ends so it doesn't unravel and I think we're good to go. Cross another one off the list. All right so the Gretsch is done. This one is another tear down, fix what needs to be fixed, make it actually sound good job. This is a tear down, clean up, Fix what needs to be fixed job. Slingle and Radio King. This one has my attention. This is a 13 inch Slingle and Radio King, which uh, I actually didn't even know was a thing. This is a really, really cool drum. This belongs to Jonathan Hess, who is the timpanist for the Handel and Hyde Society. He brought it in and asked if we would just kind of take it apart, fix everything that's wrong, clean it up, just kind of just a general, go over the thing, get it ready to use. What's the plan for the mismatched lug? I think there's only two that are missing. So if we can find like actual original Radio King lugs, like that would be cool. But if not, or if they're like wildly expensive, then, then maybe we'll just use reproductions. But I would rather get matching lugs on this thing. Got the Radio King disassembled. Learning from the prior experience, I'm keeping separate parts and separate bowls. Found some interesting stuff, and Buffalo Bill over there is working on a new piece for his skin suit. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> yep. We have four pitted out original lugs. Gonna try to clean them up with steel wool. Try to find two other originals. If not, go with repros. Do not use these. Butt plates has seen better days. This will get cleaned and oiled up. Cleaned and oiled up. Throw this on the uh, wire wheel. The shell is an old three ply with hardwood re-rings. Whoever drilled for the vent blasted it out. Even the lug holes they blasted out. Probably just clean this up, assess the edges. New heads, as Bill said, new snares. Gotta clean this up. I'll start by washing it in the sink after Bill gets his other pair of leader hosen out of there. <laughs> and don't steel wool. Have them. I'm a tuba player. Polishing wheels afterwards. Leader hosen tuba player. Did it line up? That wasn't nerve wracking at all. I know, right? I got most of these parts cleaned up real nice on this little wire wheel. Still got to hit the lugs with steel wool. I used to think this thing was underpowered, but it's perfect because when you put your finger in it, it doesn't take your skin and it doesn't do damage to the parts. It's pretty rad. Feels like you just did this. I know, right? How come you don't have a bunch already made up? Just because you never get around to it? Yeah. It's polishing them takes a while then they tarnish quickly and I don't put the same powder coat on all of them. It's crazy how fast they go from white to yeah. cleared out. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to catch it though with a reflection. Yeah, maybe.
punch is loud. I know, right? The end of a full Saturday. Powder coated some feet, finessing a finish. Bill tucked some more heads. I finished the Gretsch restoration. Started digging in on this Radio King restoration. Had to order two lugs. Then it will be ready for reassembly. Placard on this drum just needs to be strung up. Bill cranked out layout on these, just needs to drill. Yeah, man, good day. So next, maybe a xylophone project and an assembly table? Yay! Bye, Bill. Bye, Bill.